Good morning. And welcome to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B, and it is a joy to worship with each of you this morning. A few announcements this morning. First is that this Saturday, July 30th, there will be a double shower from 1 to 3 p.m. in Heritage Hall. This is to celebrate two very special events. We will be celebrating the birth of Tracy and Josh Gerald's baby, Eleanor, who was born in March. Tracy is the daughter of Susan Gibbs and the granddaughter of Cora Lee Gibbs. The other celebration will be the upcoming wedding of Alexis Robertson and Dawson Brackett. Alexis is the daughter of Christy and Glenn Robertson and the granddaughter of Clyde and Diana Smothers. Alexis is registered at Amazon and Walmart, and Tracy will appreciate any gifts or gift cards of your choice. So we hope you will join us on Saturday from 1 to 3 as we celebrate both Alexis and Tracy. Next Sunday, July 31st, I will be on vacation. Pray for me, please, because we are off to Texas, and if we think the heat is bad here, I'm going to Texas the first week of August. Jedediah, Reverend Jedediah Haynes will be preaching on the 31st. Reverend Jedediah is a deacon serving with his primary appointment as the Director of Operations for Matthew 25, a faith-based nonprofit in South Nashville that serves men experiencing homelessness, poverty, and addiction recovery. In addition to his work in Matthew 25, he serves a secondary appointment to the people of Bell Mead United Methodist Church. He is a husband to Beth and a father to Nora Lee, who will be three in October. He loves Star Wars, barbecue, and all things Harry Potter. Jed was ordained with me back in June, and I am excited for you all to get to hear him preach next week. Reverend Haley Robinson will be on call in the event of any pastoral emergencies in my time away. We have a few upcoming UMW meetings in August. First, the Night Circle will be meeting August 4th at 6.30 p.m. The Day Circle will meet August 9th at 10.30 a.m. And there will be a unit meeting on Sunday, August 14th at 2 p.m. If you have any questions about UMW or any of those meetings, please see Margaret. If you've never attended a UMW meeting before, you can. They're great fun. Um, and so if you would like to be more involved in United Women of Faith, uh, please talk to Margaret. On August 6th, back to school season is already upon us. Join us August 6th from 12 to 2 p.m. for our Back to School Bash. We will have inflatables, games, food, school supplies, and I got confirmation this week from the fire department that there will be a fire truck that you will get to touch. We are still accepting both monetary donations and donations of new school supplies. There is a, ba there's a box in the narthex for school supplies. There's also a school supply list that we pulled from the school system so that you kind of have an idea of what school supplies are needed. We will also be recruiting volunteers soon, so if you're interested in volunteering at that event, please let me or Margaret know. And finally, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew so that we know you were worshiping with us this morning. Are there any other announcements? Seeing none, I want you to know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. The goodness of God has called us here. Though we have not always done what is right in God's sight, 
Open your hearts and spirits to the refreshing love of God. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 130, and God will take care of you. Remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
You may be seated. Let us pray. Holy mystery, in ancient days you spoke to your prophet Hosea, telling him to give his children names that warned of hard times to come. Even though the people heard, you are not my people, you insisted that they remain your beloved children. When his disciples asked him how to pray, Jesus called them beloved children of God, telling them to ask only for each day's bread. Today we stand in awe, waiting to hear your word, yearning to know that we, too, are your beloved children. Give us the bread that we need today so that we might feed a world that hungers for wholeness. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together in number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs> Please stand as you are able for a reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 11. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. 
And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I was participating in one of my nightly activities a few days ago, scrolling through Twitter, and I came across a tweet by a woman named Kat Armas. The tweet said, I accidentally called God babe while I was praying today. And it was more awkward than you'd think. In our text today, we see the disciples, as we often do, needing some direction. Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And while he gives them words to pray, the words we will pray together in just a little bit. He goes beyond that and explains more about the nature of God and the nature of prayer. Jesus tries to give them a greater understanding of what it means to pray to a God who can be viewed as a parent figure. Again, we see Jesus giving an explanation of how God responds to us. When we are persistent in prayer, there is no way God does not hear us and respond. I think we all here can attest to the fact that God does not always answer our prayer in the way we ex expect or exactly the way we ask. But no matter what, God hears and answers our prayers. One of my favorite theologians is named Walter Wink. He was an American theologian, biblical scholar, and activist who demonstrated nonviolent resistance and wrote seminal biblical studies on the principalities and power structures and on the role of intercessory prayer. As I was thinking about today's text and continuing to flush out my own understanding of prayer, I turned to one of his books titled Engaging the Powers. And in this book, he writes, quote, we learn to pray by stopping the attempt and simply listening to the prayers already being prayed within us. I don't know if it sounds this way to you, but it sounds a little intimidating <laughs> to me. But maybe before we can fully unpack this quote, we need to figure out our understanding of prayer. For me, part of this understanding came through a Madeline Langle quote. Madeline Langle was an author who wrote fiction, nonfiction, and poetry. Her works reflect both 
her Christian faith and strong interest in science. She said, prayer is love, and love is never wasted. Love is something that comes naturally to us. We love our parents and our children and our spouses. We love our friends and our pets. And Jesus even calls us to love our enemies. And when we have love for others, we have a desire for them to be their best and live a full life that brings them joy and hope. And when love is something that, com that comes naturally to us, and God is love, and prayer is love, and love is never wasted, then maybe, just maybe, we can begin to hear the prayers that are already being prayed within us. God is praying within us. We join with God in a prayer already going on in us and in the world. God's prayer is already going on in us and in the world. Inexplicably connecting us to one another and to the world. Inexplicably connecting us to every other soul on the planet. Because if God is praying within me, then God is praying within you. And if God is praying within me and you, then God is praying within every single one of God's beloved children who have been made in God's own image. God is praying within every person. Even if that person does not respond to that prayer in the same ways that we do. God is praying within every person. Even if that person hasn't been able to hear the prayer or refuses to hear that prayer. God is praying within every person, regardless of political affiliation or religious affiliation or immigration status or any other thing we put onto one another. God is praying within us. And when we join in that prayer, and are willing to be connected with all of God's beloved children, we are able to break the chains of oppression and marginalization. We are able to live more fully in relationship with and love of one another. We are able to recognize and respond to the prayers being prayed in one another. And maybe God can use us to answer one another's prayers. In our text today, while the parable is that God responds to our prayers when we are persistent, it also demonstrates the willingness of the neighbor to respond, even if it's out of annoyance. We are called to show up for one another the friend gets out of bed to give whatever is needed. The parent gives the child all that it needs. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Walter Wink also writes, Intercession changes the world and it changes what is possible to God. It creates an island of relative freedom in a world gripped by an unholy necessity. A new force field appears that hitherto was only potential. An aperture opens in the praying person. 
permitting God to act without violating human freedom. The change in even one person thus changes what God can thereby do in the world. The change in even one person thus changes what God can do in the world. The greater capacity we have for love and for prayer increases the capacity we have for forgiveness and community and seeing the humanity of all people. The greater capacity we have for love and prayer, the lesser capacity we have for fear and hate. The, great, the greater capacity we have for love and prayer, the more what, the, we can see the ways in which God is working in us and through us to continue to bring about God's kingdom on earth. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we are joining in community. It is not my Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give me this bread, this day my daily bread. Forgive me of my trespasses. As I forgive those who trespass against me. This prayer is a communal prayer. Because we are in this together, regardless of our annoyance with it at times, regardless of our status or class or race or gender or anything else. We are in this together. And if we open ourselves to what God can do in our lives, that change can change what God can do in the world. And friends, we are fully invited to be part of that change. And so let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offer. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for these, our gifts. Gifts that we humbly return to you after they have been poured upon us by the Holy Spirit. Help them to further your kingdom on earth, to share your love and make a small change. In Jesus' holy name we pray.
be seated. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I want to direct your attention to the back of the bulletin where you will see our complete prayer list. We also want to remember Reverend Dr. Atora Eason Williams. She was the district superintendent of the Metro District in Memphis, and she was murdered last Monday in an attempted carjacking outside of her home. We want to lift up her husband and four children in our prayers, as well as the cabinet of the Tennessee Western Kentucky Conference, as well as all of the pastors who Dr. Artura served. We also want to keep another pastor in our prayers who was on the phone with Reverend Artura when she was unfortunately killed. Her funeral is this Wednesday, August 3rd at 10 a.m. at St. Paul United Methodist Church in Memphis, and there will be a visitation on Tuesday, August 2nd, from 4 to 8 p.m. Are there any other joys or concerns? Welcome. Welfa's brother, Jim Berman, Irwin, is having heart problems, and we want to keep him in our Are there any others? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. O oh God, who hears all of our prayers, O oh God of love and grace, We give you thanks for this day, for this gathering of people. Oh God, we lift up to you all of our prayers. There are times when it feels like there are too many to name, that everything is just too much. Prayers for comfort in the midst of trauma and loss. Prayers for healing and wholeness. Prayers for hope. Oh God, when the world feels heavy around us, and we don't know where to turn, we know that you are already standing with us. You have heard our prayers. You have prayed prayers within us when we are unable to find the words to pray. Oh God, continue to pour your spirit upon us that we might be changed by you, that we might more fully live into who you have called us to be, that we might live into your claim upon our lives as your beloved children. Oh God, we lift up to you now prayers that we are unready to speak aloud, ones that are too close to 
too personal, too deep within us to share. For we know you hear each of them. Oh God, we pray all of these things, both aloud and in our hearts. In Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 404, Every Time I Feel the Spirit.
Thank you.